God is spirit, God is love, and God is light. But in this discussion, we will emphasize the meaning of God as love. In this verse, it is explained that before the world existed, the one God had already loved the Son. In this verse, it is stated that the Son, the Word of God, loves God the Father. In this verse, it is announced that the Holy Spirit is the means of God's love being poured out. It is clear that within God, there is a communion of love. In the presence of the Father, the one God, He consciously loves His Word and His Word consciously loves the Father. Likewise, the Spirit of God consciously pours out love from the Father to His Word and from the Word to the Father. So, within the one God, there has been an eternal circle of reciprocal love from God to His Word and from His Word to God through the Spirit. This is the basis of God being love. That's why the core of His nature is love, the movement of love. Even without humanity or creation, God is love from eternity. In the Gospel, love is not an adjective but a noun. Unlike the Quran, which describes Allah as most compassionate, an adjective, not a reality, the Gospel portrays God as love. So, God is love and God is not a man. Therefore, because God is love, and the nature of love is to reach out, the triune love within God always moves outward. Thus, for the sake of His love, God desired, out of love, to share His love beyond Himself. But outside of God, there was no one. That's why God created someone so that His love could be shared. That's the beginning of creation. We were created because God wanted to share His love with us. That's why when He created, He said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. So, there is a movement from the image to the likeness. The image reflects the person, and the likeness is the reality of that person. Humans were created in this movement, with the capacity for free will, morality, obedience. Aiming to reach the point where they become one with God, becoming like God is our purpose. Humans are called anthropos, those who seek to unite with God. From this movement, humans need to be tested. So, if humans had not eaten the fruit, humans would not have died because the purpose of human creation was not death but eternal life, joy, and reaching the rank of being created in the likeness of God. This is where human obedience is tested. Saint Augustine said there is no happiness outside of God. The snake, symbolizing Satan forked tongue, represents his lying, deceitful nature. There's poison in its tongue that can kill. Satan is not only a murderer but also a liar. He deceived humans and humans fell into rebellion against God. Desiring to be like God? Not just by eating the fruit, but also by rebelling against God due to the influence of Satan. As a result, humanity lived in suffering. The failure of the head of the household Adam cannot be blamed on just one party, but two, Adam and humanity. Then, death entered through this transgression. The world is full of curses and consequences of humans' fall. Human life is full of suffering. Therefore, death is not a natural occurrence for humans, but it is a parasite that emerged due to humans being created not to die. And as a result of the fall, damage to the human psyche occurred. Humans felt shame because there was something wounded in the human spirit. Humans hid because of fear of God, which means there was damage to the human psyche resulting in two characteristics in humans, shame and fear. So, death begins from within, which means the damage comes from within. Due to this fall, humans are under for powers, sin, Satan, death, and the world. These four powers must be eliminated so that humans can unite with God and religion cannot save. Human ignorance results in damage to the spiritual apparatus Human feelings become dull, ultimately surrendering to worldly desires in all forms, and humans become unclean. For this reason, 
We must sanctify ourselves so that we can see God. Without sanctity, we cannot see God. Therefore, the path to salvation is not easy. We must strive to actualize a living faith that culminates in the actions of holy people who see God. The description in Revelation 21-22 is not a depiction of heaven, but of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, a portrayal of the church that will be glorified. In the Bible, there is no description of heaven. Our goal is not to seek heaven, but to seek Jesus. To unite with God through Jesus? So, salvation is not heaven. Instead, it is uniting with God and Christ, which is what is referred to as heaven. In John 14, when it mentions the Father's house or dwelling place, it means the Father, who resides in light. God does not know space and time, but the Father's house is an unapproachable light, divine light. So, when we enter the Father's house, it means we enter the divine light. What we see is the glory that appears on the face of Christ, the radiant light. If we remain in the divine light forever, we become glorious like God and participate in God through Christ's unity. Righteous people who desire to live in holiness and strive to live holy lives will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. This is what we seek in our lives, to become like God and to participate in the nature of God. The flesh has worldly desires, and following them will defile us. Therefore, if we want to follow Christ, we must crucify our fleshly desires and become holy as God is holy. We must purify our inner selves. Put to death and rid yourself of the desires of the flesh. Since being baptized, the old human is taken off because they have united with the death of Christ and have put on a new human that is continually renewed. It's a life that constantly strives to become holier, and this requires ongoing effort, not instant transformation. This can be achieved by fasting, purifying ourselves from all physical contamination, body, hands, feet, etc and spiritual contamination thoughts, feelings, etc. Thus, we perfect our holiness. But this is only a positional status, not yet fully realized. Thus, we must understand and know the true doctrine of the Trinity. So, we understand the goal to unite with the Holy Trinity, 